Hello everyone, Dr. Nathan Bryan here with my December 2022 website blog. The Christmas season, a time of reflection, peace, understanding, reconciliation, and gratitude. Well, it's the end of another year. It seems the older I get, the faster time goes. Maybe this makes sense since at age 49, one calendar year makes up only 2% of my existence. Back when I was 10 years old, one year reflected 10% of my entire existence and of course, seemed to take much longer to get to Christmas. Enough of the philosophical thoughts. Christmas time each year, at least for me as a Christian, provides a time of reflection, a time of learning, a time of gratitude, but also with the new year upon us, a time to plan ahead with a new vision. Now that maybe the crawlers have found my blog to be innocuous and nothing related to the jab, let me focus on the real subject matter, the death and destruction that is occurring from those that have taken the shot. I've looked back at my blogs over the past three years and remarkably was spot on. Now that the illness from the virus has waned and it is not a major topic anymore, I never thought I would be dedicating another month's blog to this subject. However, as a responsible objective scientist, it is my responsibility and obligation to make sure data is being communicated so that we can all make informed and educated decisions on what is best for us and our families. This has certainly not been the case from so-called experts from the government and messages conveyed by mainstream media. I recently attended a VIP dinner and presentations by Drs. Peter McCullough and Asim Mahotra in Dallas put on the Vaccine Safety Research Foundation. I encourage everyone who is reading this to support and donate to VSRF. I want to share with you the latest statistical data. Over the past 10 years, there's been no increase in the death rate around the globe. So this table, if you refer to the blog, shows historical global death rates for the past 10 years up to 2021. In 2022, several life insurance companies are reporting a 40% increase in all-cause death rate in people 18 to 49 years old. This is typically the age group that doesn't yet have chronic disease nor at risk of dying. What on God's earth could cause a sudden and unexpected 40% increase in death amongst the healthiest age group? What about a gene therapy designed to constantly produce a very toxic spike protein in the body of humans? Not only have death rates increased in the 18 to 48 year olds, but miscarriages and fetal demise has increased. See the figures below. Cancer rates have increased significantly in just two years since the rollout of the shot. Cancer is typically a progressive disease that occurs over many years. To see an increase in sudden onset and very aggressive metastatic disease is not normal. What has happened across the globe is criminal and evil. However, they told us what they were going to do and exactly what they were going to do now for many years. This has been planned for more than 10 years. Many of you who have questioned the science and asked relevant questions have been censored. Good doctors like Peter McCullough and Asim Mahatra have lost their jobs, their livelihood for trying to uphold their oath of office or oath of medicine, first, do no harm. I used to help in bomb bodies at a funeral home in Shreveport while I was in school there, so I know how this process works in removing blood and infusing formaldehyde through the common carotid artery and then allowing outflow of blood through the contralateral vein. Many funeral homes and embalmers are reporting never seen before arterial clots in the dead that are blocking infusion of embalming fluid. They describe these clots as calamari-like, like a rubber band. Just this week, the Washington Post reported that the majority of deaths from COVID are from those that took the shot. Remember, according to Fauci and government officials, the shot was supposed to protect us from infection, protect us from transmitting, and protect us from death. But now we know the truth. None of the above are true, and in fact, now evidence shows that there may be transmission or shedding of virus from those that took the shot to those who did not. Now, higher death rate, higher infections in those that took the shot. So now we know the truth, that the shot is not effective, but a deliberate poison and bioweapon that is now injected in hundreds of millions of people around the globe. Those of you that were vigilant and resistant, congratulations. Those that were trusting of our government and the so-called experts, I'll continue to pray for you and your healing. Data show that the mRNA is transmitted in breast milk to nursing mothers. The mRNA is found in lymph nodes and blood months after the injection with no signs of going down. The manufacturers told us that the mRNA would only stay at the site of injection. Never in the history of the world and medicine has a shot in the arm prevented infection in the nasal pharynx from a respiratory virus. Scientifically, this makes no sense, but they sold it as such. Now that we've had time to reflect and learn, how do we move forward? Those that receive the shot, you must be vigilant to keep your inflammation down and avoid any insult that would cause additional inflammation. 
Heart attacks and strokes are at an all-time high. Do not get any additional boosters or vaccines for that matter. Any vaccine causes an immune response and an inflammatory cascade. The next shot may be the final shot. Nitric oxide is critical for mitigating the inflammatory response to viral infections. We must replete and restore our body's ability to produce nitric oxide. Also, sunlight is the best disinfectant. We must shine light on the data and the truth. Remember, Stephen Hawking told us, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. The illusion of knowledge by our government officials and drug manufacturers is the enemy. I applaud people like Drs. McCullough and Mahatra for having the courage to stand up and tell the truth. I hope you will join us and be one of the ones who speak up. Another relevant quote by Maya Angelou, courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. You can practice any virtue erratically, but nothing consistently without courage. As we celebrate the Christmas season this year, let us rely on our faith, rely on the truth, and give thanks to God. We're in a fight of good versus evil. Many of us are fighting our own battles and being challenged. I have former partners suing me personally and suing my companies, trying to keep me from innovating and bringing my science to the masses. I ask for your prayers as I fight these battles. The truth is on my side, and the truth will set me and us all free. After all, we are spiritual beings. Spirituality is the ability to learn and see life as that as not always visible. This allows us to perceive the invisible and will also give us the strength to do the impossible. I don't think it's a coincidence that I've spent my entire adult life and career studying a molecule that is invisible, colorless, odorless, and able to make important discoveries and contributions to the field. I've always integrated my faith into my research and asked God for direction, guidance, and wisdom to see what others have not seen so I can do what others have not been able to do. Even scripture from the Old Testament of 2 Kings 6, 15 through 17 reveals, Things are there when you can't see them, present but invisible. Let us continue to have faith, recognize and show gratitude for our many blessings, and continue to fight for the truth. Merry Christmas to you all, and the very best for a new year.